Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Sanket Pisat. I am a gynecological endoscopic surgeon practicing in Mumbai, India. And this video is actually a follow-up of the previous video that we released on block tubes and hydrosalpings. So hydrosalpings is probably the second stage of a block tube that happens in certain conditions. We already looked at what block tubes are, how they can affect uh, pregnancy, how they can cause infertility in our last video. So if you haven't seen that, please be sure to take a look at that video as well. And in this video, we are going to be talking about hydrosalpings. Sometimes hydrosalpings or swollen tubes is a condition which is reported particularly on sonography in certain patients who are trying to get pregnant. How does this hydrosalping start? Hydrosalpings actually starts because of the same conditions as a tubal block, which is some sort of a pelvic infection, or in particularly in the Indian population, tuberculosis. Here again, like block tubes, patients do not have or hardly ever have any symptoms. And this is mostly diagnosed on an ultrasound or an HSG, which is a hysterosalpingogram. That means it is a test which injects dye into the uterus and then takes an X-ray of the abdomen to find out whether or not there is a block. Now, in cases of hydrosalpins, treatment is definitely required. Let's look at why treatment is required in hydrosalping. You see, in hydrosalpings, as time passes, the swelling of the tube actually is because of collection of small amounts of fluid within the tube. Now, we all know, based on the previous lecture of anatomy that I posted, there is a link in the description below, that the tubes are connected to the uterus. And in fact, the tubes are the channel through which the pregnancy uh, finds its way into the uterus and then latches itself on. In this case, there is fluid contained inside the tubes. This is trapped fluid. And as time passes, this fluid starts becoming toxic to the growing pregnancy. Hence, firstly, in hydrosalpings, it could happen that the tubes are blocked, not allowing the pregnancy to find its way into the uterus. However, it could also be possible that there is toxic fluid inside these tubes. And even if you were to try to attempt a pregnancy naturally or by IVF, this would not allow the pregnancy to grow. So dealing with the hydrosalpings is very important regardless of whether you are trying pregnancy naturally or by IVF. And this is very important to know. So what exactly is the treatment for a hydrosalpings? For a block tube, we already saw that a procedure called hysteroscopic cannulation is what is done. For hysteroscopic cannulation, we pass a small cannula inside the uterus up till the opening of the fallopian tube, which is blocked, and then put a stent much the same way as a heart stent has been placed in order to open the tube. However, unlike, in heart, unlike as in heart surgery, the stent is not left there and is removed. However, in patients of hydrosalpins, this cannot be done because the tube is not only blocked, but the tube has been completely damaged. Now, what is important to note is that the treatment for this condition is surgical cutting or clipping of the tube. In medical terms, we refer to it as delinking. Delinking means disconnecting the connection between the tube and the uterus. So that means that the tube and the uterus are cut off and separated from each other. In severe cases, when the swelling is very large, the doctor may choose to opt for a salpingectomy, 
rather than a delink a salpingectomy essentially is a procedure in which the tube is completely cut and removed from the body versus a delinking in which the only the connection of the tube and the uterus is cut off so salpingectomy the entire tube is removed and delinking only the tube is cut off so depending on your specific condition the doctor may choose one of these two surgeries the most common concern that patients have is a psychological concern after this procedure it is generally felt that because one or both of my tubes have now been removed there is no possibility of a pregnancy however what the patient needs to understand is that these tubes were deceased to begin with and in case the tubes would have been left behind it would not only have not allowed pregnancy but it would have been detrimental to trying to get pregnant either naturally or by iv another possibility is that because these tubes are damaged internally there could be a possibility that you may land up having an ectopic pregnancy what is an ectopic pregnancy we have videos on that as well and i'm going to provide a link in the description below so that is all about hydrosalpings and its treatment if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and if you like the video please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates thank you